if somebody didn't know anything about Semisonic, what would you tell them about what the band is and what, what your role in it is? Well, I'm a drummer. It's a three-piece uh, guitar rock band from that was uh, out of Minneapolis. We sort of came together right at the time that Nirvana uh, was sort of the dominating uh, idea in rock, and we were all huge Nirvana fans. Um, we also knew that what we were doing was sort of really different from Nirvana and Pearl Jam and Smashing Pumpkins and all the sort of uh, the music that was uh, of that moment. We're big fans of indie rock. We're also big fans of pop and R&B. The three of us are kind of quiet guys, uh, but we like to play loud. <laughs> and um, uh, we're all continue to be very close friends. Mm, that's great. One thing I know about your own um, spiritual pilgrimage is um, the quest to to listen to people who are standing outside the door, so to speak, of, of churches. Um, what can you tell us about that? As a rock musician, um, I travel in circles that are, um, you know, rock people are kind of spiritual, but I wouldn't call them religious. And I think... Um, a lot of them are sympathetic to spiritual ideas. A number of them are, are really sort of pretty devout atheists, actually. Um, and they all have a lot to teach me. And I've been lucky to, to have the friends that I have in that world, including all of the non-church people and the non-believers. And um, I just know for myself, I've had such... Um, I've been fed... Um, and uh, by the by, hearing these people talk from their conscience about what bugs them, about what drives them away from the church, um, about all the goofy things that the church is hung up on, um, about how all of the talk is about who's going to heaven and who's going to hell, and the empty, huge, empty void left in the middle of all of that. So. Um, <coughs> The, the the voices of these unchurched rock and rollers has been a huge influence on me. In, in addition to many other non-churched, you know, people and atheists, such as my wife, um, so um, and and members of my own family, um, and I think that too often the church is thinking about what are we going to say to those people, and I just want us to shut up and listen. Mm. I just want us to listen. I, I don't want us to try and figure out how we can get them into church. In fact, I'd rather just get us out into the world and listening and observing and thinking and not trying to make a sales pitch, not trying to sell people fire insurance. Um, you know, just listen mm -hmm. and see what we notice as we listen, see what we notice happening inside of ourselves as we listen and see if we actually aren't taught something by these people. In, in my case, it's my experience that God speaks to me through atheists and not accidentally. Mm. I think their conscience, uh, the conscience of any person, believer or not, when engaged um, thoughtfully and rooted in their real life experience and put under the grill of their own, of their own intellectual rigor, has immense offerings for any of us. I know it does for me. Yeah. I, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for their, uh, their witness to me. And they may not even know that they're witnessing to me, but they, but they are. Jake, what is it like to hold Christian values uh, in a profession that can lean toward um, self-indulgence, hedonism? I mean, it's a great question. Um, but let's, let's look at the Rolling Stones, for instance. Let's look at their song, Sympathy for the Devil. Okay. You know, they went, they went right at it. They just went off, in, they just dove into the deep end of the hedonism pool. And they came up with this line, I shouted out, who killed the Kennedys when after all it was you and me? And now that, to me, is so prophetic. That is mm. such a prophetic yes. insult. You know, uh, the idea that, hey, don't, don't point elsewhere. It's right on you. It's on you, and you've got to deal with it. Now, first of all, rock and roll has, does not have a monopoly on hedonism, and I've got to tell you, <laughs> judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, 
let's let's talk about our own hedonism at some point because we got a ton of it and and you can see it in all the huge 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 churches built right next door to slums and and places where you know we've we've built basically big monuments to ourselves and our own religion and and and, and left Jesus out in the cold um, but I do think that um, you know the, the rock and roll world is filled with personalities who have battled hedonism and yet uh, grappled honestly with their consciences and come up with amazing insights such as the one I I just relayed from the stones. Mm-hmm. 